Hi everybody, so today I'm going to give you a few tips on how to date a pedal. First I'm going to speak about some specific brands such as Boss, Electro Harmonics and Ibanez. And after that I'm going to give you some advices for pedals in general. I got those tips from reading web pages on the internet and by studying my own personal collection. Please be aware that when you look at some auctions or classifieds that there are many fakes online. Double check before buying some so-called vintage units. All the links that I'm going to mention are in the video description, so feel free to read them and check them out. For the boss pedals, it's very easy. If you have the serial number of the pedal, you can use some web pages such as Stumpbox Zone to decode this number. It will give you the accurate months and year of production. It's very easy to read the serial number. On the boss pedals, it's either written at the bottom of the ladder, just like for this uh, PS2 pedal, or it can also be written inside the battery cavity. For example, for this Japanese Boss OC2, it's written on the sticker inside. You can see it here. And sometimes it's also written uh, at the, the very end of the cavity, close to the Boss logo on some older pedals. Boss has been using serial number starting in 1977, and the first serial number to be used was 6400. So if you have a pedal with, with a serial number which is below, it's a fake, so don't go for it. So if you don't have the serial number of the Boss pedal, you can check Boss Area website, which is giving you a many information about the label color and the year of production, depending on the country of production. For example, the production of Boss pedals moved from Japan to Taiwan in between 88 and 92. So if you have a Japanese pedal, you can be sure that it has been produced before 92 and most of the time 99. Another interesting feature is that Boss changed the silver screw of the battery cavity for a plastic one in 81. So if you have a silver screw, it can be that your pedal is very old and before 81. Something else is the power supply of the Boss pedals. They use either the ACA or the PSA adaptators and bus changes from the PSA to the ACA adaptors in 92. Vintage Ibanez units are very sold and sometimes you can see some of them going for very high prices. Again, be careful when buying them. Vintage units have been produced between 81 and 84. Unlike Boss pedals, it's not possible to accurately date Ibanez pedals with the same number. Nevertheless, this same number is going to give you many information on the production year. One tip that is going to help you with Ibanez pedals but also pedals from other brands is that when you have a C mark like this, this C mark is starting to be used at, in the late 80s. If you have it, it means this is not a vintage unit, this is a reissue. So this is a TS9 reissue one. If you don't have this C mark, it means that you may have one vintage reissue and the year of production will be related with the label color and the serial number. So for example, if we take this CP835 compressor pedal, it's a black label, so when you have a black label and you don't have the C mark, the first number of the serial number is giving you the year. So 1 stands for 81 and when you have 2 is for 82. If you have a silver label, such as on this TS9, you don't have the C mark on this one, and the same number is starting with a 3. So this means it has been produced in 83. If it was a 4, it would have been 84. If you want some more details on the Ibanez vintage units, I advise you to read carefully the Analog Man website, which is giving you more information, such as the chip, depending on the production year. The situation of the Electro Harmonix pedal is much more complicated. In fact, the production has been quite chaotic throughout the years. The, for example, the production has been made either in the US or in Russia. The, the company went bankrupt and then reopened. So it's very hard to follow the production of Electro Harmonix. Nevertheless, because the fan community is huge for EHX pedals, you can find very easily a lot of information for their famous pedals. For example, for the Big Muffs, I advise you to go to the Kitray webpage. On this webpage you will find a lot of information on the different Bigmap versions and how to quickly identify them. When you have your Bigmap version, you know more or less what is the production year. Apart from those fan web pages, I found two differences that differentiate most of the time vintage from reissues for Hidro Harmonix. 
those differences are not 100% true, but most of the time they apply. First of all, if we look at those two pillars, here you have one vintage octave multiplexer, and here you have one bitmap free issue. If you look at them, you see that the knobs are slightly different. So you see that for the vintage unit, you have what is called chicken knobs, so you have a small tip like this indicating the position. Whereas for the reissues, you have this kind of hockey pucks knobs. So most of, most of the time for the reissues, you will have this kind of hockey pucks knobs. Another difference is the status LED. So for example, I still have my reissue Big Muff, but I also have one vintage small clone here. This is the mini chorus version, not the full chorus version. So if you look at them, the LED for the vintage unit is much smaller. It's here. Whereas for the reissues, you have a bigger one. And for older units than the small clone, you can also have no LED at all. The first general tip that I wanted to give you today at your pedal is to compare with eBay Auction. Indeed, sometimes people are putting the production year of their pedal as well as their sale number. So you can compare this sale number to the sale number of your pedal. And by doing so and using multiple auctions, you can have some time range for your pedal. Nevertheless, I don't like this method too much because it can be sometimes misleading and you have to trust the people making the auction, which is not always very convenient. And the method that is more accurate but maybe also a bit more complicated to use is to check the sale number of the potentiometers. Indeed, on each potentiometer you have a 7-digit sale number in most of the cases for the pedals. The first three digits they stand for the company that made the potentiometer. Then you have two digits for the year of production and finally two digits for the week of production. You can use some web pages such as the Guitar Data project to get the production of the potentiometer directly just by using this serial number. Nevertheless, you have to be aware that with this method you're not going to date exactly your pedal but more the potentiometer. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please thumb up. It will motivate me to make more tutorials. This was my first tutorial, so if you like this video, please tell me and I will try to make some more. You can also give me some idea on what to, to, to do. I'm sure that some of you have more tips to date pedal. Please comment and share them with the community. It will be very helpful for all of us and I will be glad to, to learn them. So if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel not to miss the next videos about pedal testing and tutorials. Thank you very much. Bye.